Well, comedian and podcast host Adam Carolla is one of the most stalwart defenders of actual free speech left in America. Carolla is not only a famous host, he's, he's an amazing car racing fan and participant. We were just in L.A. last week, and we decided to go over to his race car garage and talk to him because we couldn't resist because it's amazing. Here's part of the conversation that resulted. Adam Carolla, you've been on the road for the past several months talking about free speech. I know your views on it. Have you been able to convince the audience, especially young people, that free speech matters? Are they on your side, do you think? Uh, I've been able to convince my audience who already thought <laughs> free speech mattered. Uh, I think people, I think the pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit, you know. We've had, hit a saturation level. Um, I sort of believe as human beings we work this way. Like, I believe that in the late 80s, there were hair bands and big guys wearing, you know, bouffants and spandex and aquanet and eyeliner and everything else. And then that gave way to grunge music. Yeah. Kurt Cobain, tattered shirts, nobody cared, right? So it's like, what could be further away from hair bands, grunge music? And that's what came next. So I'm starting to wonder if it's swinging back. I think the insanity of the woke folks out there have forced sane people to push back, and we may be going from the hair band to the grunge movement. Have the woke people pushed back against you? Yeah, the woke people are, they'll push back against anybody at any time. But you don't seem bothered. You're, you're like the one person I know who seems totally uninterested in what the woke people say and totally unbothered by their attacks. Well, I know what's in my heart, and I hate that statement, but I know who I am. You can't convince me I hate a group, hate a sexual proclivity, hate a person. You couldn't convince me I hated a neighbor or a friend or Hispanics, blacks, gays, whatever. You can't bestow that upon me. That's something that's inside me, and I'm aware of it, and I know I don't. So you can't convince me of that. So you're not afraid because you know what they're saying is a lie. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm an atheist. Like, I really don't care. Like, at the end of the day, I want to go race one of these cars and wrench on something and build something and eat dinner with my kids and wife. Like, I, I, there's a sort of freedom in, in not caring. There's a real freedom in not caring. Huh. Why don't more people feel that way? I think there's a vanity, and I, and I think that everybody is, is wired to be a little bit narcissistic, and no one wants to go online and read bad things about themselves, right. and nobody wants to read untruths or inaccurate things about themselves. And so we are wired to alleviate. So I, I, I've never thought about it this way, but here you go. When your ankle is sore, you're wired to stay off your ankle, like less weight, hop, yes. hop, lean this way. You go on Twitter, you read a bunch of horrible things about yourself, you're wired to alleviate. You're not wired to put weight on a rolled ankle, you're wired to go, oh, people are saying X, Y, and Z about me on Twitter, let's fix that. Right. And, and the fix is apologizing and walking statements back, but to get it to go away, I want to alleviate. I'm not interested in the truth, I'm not interested in what the history books say, I, I want this, my ankle hurts. I want to get the weight off it immediately. So you walking this stuff back, you apologizing, you kowtowing to these people is a way to get the weight. It's like a crutch, and I can get the right. weight off this, and it'll go away, and I don't care about what the doctor or the orthopedic it surgeon thinks. It just like hurts. Right make, now, make the pain it hurts. Yeah. I want it to go away. <laughs> but you don't play that game, and therefore they don't bother you. And it just seems like that's a model for the rest of us, that if everybody had that attitude, like, I don't care, I just want to wrench on my cars and have dinner with my kids, they well, would have no power. They're not in the business of banging their head against a wall. They're in the business of mowing you down and moving on to their next subject. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're immediate gratification group. Let's remember, these were kids who got everything they wanted immediately. Right. So if you don't give them immediate <laughs> gratification, they're off you in like two days. Yeah, no. They, they, this is not, you know, a long slog that's going to take place over months and years. This is, you give me what I want right now, which is an apology, or you to get fired from your job, or whatever that is, you to be humiliated, and, 
you to be contrite. And if you don't give in almost immediately, they immediately move on to their next Well, then victim. you'd have to be a moron to give in immediately to unreasonable demands, wouldn't you? I think so. But, you know, you would think about all the politicians and all the newscasters and, and voices out there. You think about the ones that just sort of weathered the storm and just put their head down and said no apology. They immediately pack up and go find another victim or somebody to turn into a victim. And if it's clear that there's nothing here for you, if they ring you like a bar rag and no tears come out, <laughs> they move on because they want a bucket of tears. <laughs> they want a bucket of your tears and they ring and they ring and you just go, don't let a drop fall. Oh. And if the drop doesn't hit that pail, they pick up the pail and they go, let's go find some more tears. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you.